Well, welcome to uh, Thanksgiving Monday, October, here just outside of Edmonton. And I am going to open and review a uh, whiskey that I have been looking forward to uh, for months, ever since I heard about it. Um, and that would be the Lot 40 Cask Strength. So this will be my first thoughts, uh, as deep as I go for a review of Lot 40 uh, 12 year old cask strength whiskey. Hope you enjoy. So I'm outside. Uh, there is a bit of a breeze earlier. It, it was pretty calm, so I hope uh, you can still hear me and aren't distracted by the, the flurry of leaves. But uh, very soon there'll be nothing but white snow on the ground, and uh, that's okay. But I likely won't be shooting too much outside at that point. And I thought, well, let's try to capture this last little bit of fall. Uh, this morning, there are lots of snow on the ground, but it's still melting off during the day, and that's fantastic. Uh, this review, um, or this opening, uh, is something, as I mentioned earlier, that I've been looking forward to for a really long time. Uh, Lot 40 is 100% uh, rye whiskey, and uh, I, think, I think their byline is unapologetically Canadian. Uh, I have a lot to say about Canadian whiskey. I actually enjoy it quite a bit. Came to it late, started with scotch and then actually moved to bourbon and then kind of ended up now in Canadian whiskey, which is funny because uh, I'm certainly Canadian through and through and proud of it. Um, but there are some things in the industry that, uh, hey, people that know way more than me have said great arguments about why they are the way they are. But just as a latecomer to the Scotch bourbon whiskey scene, um, some things I don't understand. And one of them is the way we treat the word rye in Canada. I understand that it is a, uh, a flavor profile, a note profile, um, but I really appreciated when uh, someone recommended to me Lot 40 because Lot 40 is 100% Canadian, <laughs> sorry, it is 100% Canadian, but it's 100% rye and it's called a rye and it is rye and, and I just think that's, that's how it should be. What I have here is, um, I understand that Corby put out uh, Lot 40 and I think Pike Creek uh, early on at the end of the 90s. Uh, I never had any of that and I haven't seen it around. But then they brought it back and uh, this is when they brought it back in 2012. And this, I am fortunate enough to say, this is the single copper pot, 100% rye that they released in 2012. I recently found it at a uh, liquor store in South Edmonton and was able to purchase it, which is great. Um, I'll give some tasting notes on this later, maybe just its own review. Uh, but I will say that you know the 2012 release had 90% uh, unmalted rye and 10% malted rye. Uh, you'll know it because it says 2012 on it. Uh, and it's a yellow label, but it's hard to find these days. If you're looking for just the regular Lot 40, you're likely going to come across a green label like this. And I haven't opened this yet, and I haven't had green label in a while, uh, but I do remember liking it. Still has that strong rye flavor. Um, but this is 100% unmalted rye. I, I don't, I'm not privy to their decisions of why they went that way, but I, I, I guess they like the flavor profile more of unmalted rye than having any malted rye in it at all. But that's, if you go to your, your grocery store or, or your uh, LCBO or your um, wherever you buy good whiskey, uh, likely you're gonna see Lot 40 in the green label. But if you're very fortunate, you've gone this weekend to a fine uh, establishment and you've seen the antique collection. That's the Pike Creek 21, the Wiser 35, the uh, Goodham and Warts Trinity, 17 year old, and this uh, Lot 40 cask strength 12 year old. So uh, as I understand it, this is aged longer than their typical. I think their first one was really only a four year, uh, but I don't know that. It's, 
uh, I should look it up. Uh, but it wasn't terribly old. Um, but this is 12 years, and they're putting out cask strength. If I look at the bottle here, uh, you can see it says first edition bottle uh, 4259 out of 4968, and it's bottled at 55%. So I'm going to give this a pour. Uh, and one of the reasons why I've really been looking forward to this is rye is a strong drink. Um, you know, it's spicy, it's bold. Um, it uh, definitely, you can, you can, at least I, can feel it uh, in my mouth, certainly on the edges. If there's a bit of rye in the, uh, in the mash bill or, or in the mix. Um, but I quite like it. I think that might be because I started with scotch, where... Um, you know, classic scotch profile would be smoke. Um, and then of course I, I like the, the Isle characteristic, which is usually peated. Uh, so it kind of makes sense that, that a stronger whiskey like a rye would be something that would appeal to me. Um, boy, I'm just almost on goosebumps. And I wish I had my cousin Brad. Brad, this one's for you. I wish you were close by uh, and we could open this up together. Now this is early thoughts, and if you're looking for uh, a master taster to really give good notes, um, I like uh, I like the fellow who does CanadianWhiskey.org, and I forgot his name. Uh, I like the Whiskey Topic podcast. I'm sure they'll review it. I like Whiskey in Six, in the Six. Sorry, around Toronto, I find his reviews spot on, and all of those people have uh, certainly a more refined palate than I do. Uh, I'm just here because I love I love this drink, and I. I want to share it with others and, and educate. I like to uh, talk a bit about these things. So here, here goes. So on first look, the lot 40 cask strength has a pretty nice golden color. Probably can't quite see that. Um, a little bit darker than the traditional Lot 40, but actually surprisingly similar in color profile, I would say. Um, I'm just gonna give it, it's got some legs on the side. I noticed that it was coating the glass right away. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a nose. Oh. Okay, and that's another thing. Even though rye is known uh, for its spicy notes uh, and, and, and that bite on the tongue and, and strong finish, I also find I also find the nose invitingly sweet. I, I think it draws me in. So even though it's not as um, candy-like as you'll get in corn, uh, and sometimes the mouthfeel can be a little thinner than you get in corn, um, I really like it. You know, for 55%, I'm surprised that I'm not being overwhelmed with uh, alcohol. Now that could be because I'm outside and there's a lot of fresh air blowing through. It's quite quite a bit of a breeze here. So, mm, but yeah, that there's definitely sweetness there, but an inviting sweetness, um, the promise of something good is coming. I can't really catch any of the of the wood notes. Well, maybe. Boy, yeah, I was so fortunate to find this bottle. I really do hope you can find it too. I, I've got to give it a taste. It, it's, it's, uh, I've held off long enough. Oh, there's some of the legs forming on the edge. Quite nice. So cheers. Hope you have a bottle too. Oh, first impression. Now there's a lot of anticipation, so there's probably some emotion in this, um, but wonderful. When we talk about rye being a strong grain and rye being a Canadian grain, of course it's grown in, in America. They've got great rye there. They've got some, some of my favorites uh, are bottled uh, in the US. I think this is a grain that we need to be proud to have Canada. It's, it's got all sorts of flavor notes. Mm. Mm. Now I'm really getting that, that pepper coming out. 
um, but that dryingness in the finish that I find still invitingly sweet carried through the wood notes are strong. I was going to do, you can see another glass here, I was going to do a, a comparison like pour the regular and pour the cask strength, but I just last minute decided why don't I just stay on point, stay on point with the cask strength um, lot 40. And definite wood oak notes there. Okay. I know you're not here to watch someone drink, um, but it is wonderful. It absolutely lives up to an expectation. You know, when you're, you're, you're hoping for a good release or maybe you're, you're going to go out and see a good movie and then your actors disappoint or, or something like that. That is not the case here. Um, I said in an earlier podcast, just on anticipation, go out and get this. Um, er, early thoughts on this is it's fantastic. I would put this absolutely up there with any of the strong rise that I've enjoyed. Um, this year, Masterson's 10 year uh, was probably one of the, my favorite whiskeys that I've ever had uh, this year anyways. Um, but this is really, really good. It's, it's uh, peppery, but there's some sweetness. A little bit of smoke must be coming, maybe the, the, from the charred barrels, I'm thinking. I don't know, not much, um, but lots of wood blending it together and, uh, and peppery. I don't catch too much dill. Sometimes in rye, I'll find dill, a dill profile. You don't want the nose. Now that I've said it out loud, and that is a, a trick that I heard someone say once on a podcast, and sure enough, now that I've said it, I, I definitely can smell something that I could describe as dill. Not quite dill pickle, but, but, but a dill, dill seed. Mm. Mm. Yep, early thoughts are don't walk, run. If you like rye, if you like um, a strong, bold drink, pick this up. I'm gonna give it five stars. I just think it's fantastic. This this is a truly wonderful drink. Thanks, Don Livermore, for, for figuring out how to get this to us. Uh, it's just fantastic. All right, I think I was leaning into this at the beginning of this podcast, and then I wanted to sort of hold up uh, so I could do my review. I know some people like to tune in, uh, see a review. Is this worth buying? Should I get this? And then they're off and running. Uh, but I wanted to talk pretty strongly about the use of rye in Canadian whiskey. As I said in my intro, there are people that have argued that we should uh, include it in, in any whiskey that goes out there as Canadian whiskey, that we should call all the whiskey Canadian rye whiskey. Uh, and I do know that there's a, there's a historic point of view behind that, and I can appreciate that. Except in today's uh, whiskey market, I think people are looking to be very educated about what's going on. You know, what's in the blend? What's in the mash bill? How is it aged? Was it toasted? Was it charred? Was it, you know, in new wood? Was it in ex-bourbon? Was it finished in sherry? I, I really think the consumer and the market is asking for more and accurate information. And I struggle with the use of the word rye in Canadian rye whiskey when there's no rye grain in the blend, uh, in the mash bill. Well, they don't do mash bill in Canadian. Just because of the flavor profile, um, I'm going to be a little harsh here, so please forgive me. But for me, it's kind of like when I, if I eat great vegetarian cuisine, it's fantastic. It can be vegan. I love it. Someone who really has a passion, prepares it, it's very good. If that same person says, you know what, I'm going to make a tofu steak. It's going to be, uh, but I'm not going to tell you that. I'm just going to call it a steak and I'm going to serve it to you and say, hey, here's my great steak. Uh, it would have flavor characteristics of steak. Um, it wouldn't have the same t texture or whatnot, uh, but I think it's a bit of a disservice to serve that to someone and just tell them it's a steak because it tastes like steak when there's no steak in it. Uh, in, a, in an absolutely analogous way, I would say, can we stop calling Canadian rye whiskey rye whiskey if there's no rye in it? 
I know historically we can. And if you go to Wikipedia, the sum of all human knowledge, it'll say, well, there's rye whiskey, like they do in America, has to be 51% rye. Or there's Canadian rye whiskey, where it just has to taste like rye, could be 100% corn, but we're going to call it rye whiskey. I, I know I'm young in this industry and have no pull whatsoever, but I just want to say, let's stand behind real rye whiskey. In Canada, we grow great wheat, and barley, we are a great green country. I would say we're one of the bread baskets of the world. And uh, rye grows here and it grows well. And we've got great distilleries putting out great ryes. Alberta Distillery is the rye, at least behind the initial whistle pig and behind the Mastersons. And I mean, the, the, the rye coming out of Canada is fantastic. And now this Lot 40. Lot 40 itself is great. You should go out and pick up a bottle if you've never had it. If you can get a hold of this cask strength, please get it. It's fantastic. The flavors are strong, lots of wood. Um, and all of the things you're looking for in rye. And it is rye. It's actually rye. And it's unapologetically Canadian. That's my rant. Uh, sorry for those that, uh, that feel otherwise. But I think it's time uh, that we even look to change laws. And I don't know how we did that. Uh, but so that we can say, hey, this is a rye whiskey because it has rye in it. Not just because it tastes like rye. Well, thanks for my rant, uh, for, for uh, not thanks for my rant, I mean thanks for giving me a minute to rant about that in the Canadian industry. And uh, if you stayed with me this long and you started with the uncorking, uh, obviously I haven't had enough time to really taste it. I should come back to it over a few days. Uh, people who really know what they're doing do that. But I can tell you, ah, you know, the nose is sweet, inviting. Oh, the palate is smoothed out through oak, but it's spicy. Oh, and it holds up. It's bold and strong. If you like rye whiskey, or if you've never tried Canadian rye whiskey, hey, this Lot 40 cask strength is a five-star Canadian rye whiskey. Give it a try. Thanks for watching. Hey, like the video if you thought it was good, or subscribe. Uh, I'm still young and I'm still picking this up. I don't mean in age, I mean in the age of my podcast. Uh, but thanks for joining me. That's been my review of Lot 40 Cask Strength. You guys have a great Monday. And uh, pretty soon I'll be settling into just one review a week. Likely coming out on Saturdays. So subscribe, like, and comment. Take care.